But what if you could also wear it? What if you could brute force something based on an article of clothing? Could you? You think? <laughs> Maybe if you head over to the web store. <laughs> I will. Let me head over to the web store. Let's see. How do I get there? Uh, UTAC.io. Welcome to Uncensored Tactical, where our goal is to talk about training, tactics, and more without being limited by red tape or a sterile bureaucratic environment so that we can bring you value and insight in a way that other organizations just plain can't. We are live. Cool. Tons of people flooding the lockpicking world, and I love that. Lots and lots and lots of questions about what tool do I buy? Uh, what skill set do I start? Any beginner tips? How do I do this? What should I be doing next? So I figured something nice and light and easy and fun for both Dave and I at UTAC here. And we're going to tell you, I'm sure, tons of nuance, but we're also going to talk about our favorite lockpicking tools in general. Dave, welcome back. Hello, everyone. Glad to be here. And I feel like the key word up front is favorite. So there's going to be a lot of overlap with what we think is quote unquote best, which depends on application. But favorite is also its own thing. So keep that in mind. Cool. Uh, short housekeeping. Patreon is a big deal for us. If you want access to the after show, which we're going to record tonight, that's anything above the $2 level on Patreon gets you access to all of our after shows. And I love these after shows that we've been doing. They are not high value content they are the worst content that we produce just us goofing off um also if you want a high quality protection dog like arrow right here who's laying at my feet doing her job get in touch with me we'll get on the phone we'll see if a fortress canine dog is right for you and if it is we will get you a utac discount for a protection dog uh what else easiest way to get in touch with me during the show if you have feedback or thoughts just shoot me an email and that's pat at utac.io that's the housekeeping we're done. Let's get into the content. I figured we'd go back and forth for about five or six items uh, with you and me just going over our favorite tools, and then we kind of get loose after that. Cool. Start us off. Number one, the original Bogota set, the two-piece set where the backs are the tension wrenches, and it comes with a single hump and a triple hump. Cool. Thanks for coming to the show. Uh, let's wrap it up, and we'll see you guys on the next one. But what about my city rake? <laughs> That's my number one favorite. Uh, we sell those for $25 at our web store. You can also get those at just a ton of other websites. And you can get different makes and models of them that are kind of one-offs or different profiles or similar or different handle lengths. Just the straight up original Bogotas or any variation of them. Uh, the only ones I don't like are the Bogota Springs. If you've seen those anywhere, uh, I don't like those. Uh, they're just... So smooth. They're so effective. The profile is so good for raking. Um, God, I would be hard hard pressed to not carry those in any of my lines of gear. They're so good that I buy multiples every time I need a replacement, and I just store them in a bunch of places. They're so freaking valuable. Yeah, those are what I carry each day as well. Always have them with me. I'll say my favorite, again, not best for every situation tool is a low profile rake like a snake rake i love using those for some reason they're probably not as generally useful but a lot of locks have kind of smaller keyways especially if you're not in high security environments uh just like a lot of crappy consumer locks have little tiny keyways so i always love getting opens with a little uh with a lower profile snake rake can you give me so two things. One, can you give me a link for that so I can look up exactly what you're talking about for a snake rake? Yeah, sure. Uh, let's see. One second. I'm just going to go to hard case survival. Uh, so I'm not super brand specific on this. I've had a few different ones over the years. The current one I have is from hard case survival, though. Okay. Um, but but it, it was a pretty good price. And the... Um, part where you grip the picks a little more reinforced than the ones that are just kind of the thin flexible metal for the whole length. I like this cause they're, uh, it's like a reinforced grip a bit, but it's still like super cheap. I like it a lot. One second. Ba -ba -ba, lock pick sets. My brain's just struggling to do this while talking. I'm sorry. Uh, 
I am currently drinking. Um, I have a little drink. ceramic coffee mug with a tea bag in it and just buttloads of honey. So no sugar. I'm actually drinking green tea with peach in it. And Okay, nice. I I'm am also, not drinking anything. I'm also coming off of right. the worst fucking flu of my life. So my stomach's a little touchy and has been for like the last two weeks. Did you find All right, the tool? there we go. I finally got it. I'm just going to drop a screen. Yes, I'm going to drop a screenshot in chat because I can't find the link. So I just went to Google Images just to move the show along. Did you know that in Google Images okay, you can just on. copy and then paste right into Discord? You don't have to like download the whole photo yep. to your desktop and then upload it to Discord? It's a little trick you're, I learned a couple weeks ago. You're joking, right? Okay. Well, there we go. Finally, I don't know why that was so hard. Okay, here it comes. Oh, That's the little, the, the medium and then low yes. hump. So you call that yeah, a so Yeah, so that's not like the best example. That's just one I found on Google Images. But most of them have a much lower differential mm -hmm. between the highest and lowest point. So you can work them in smaller keyways without necessarily bumping all the pins. A bit easier than something like a Bogota. So I would say okay. this is my other favorite rake besides the Bogota, just because you know, like uh, I, I like using it for small keyways. Got the it. Bogota can be a, a little big for some keyways, or if like a lock has really weird bidding, yep. I've really struggled to get it with Bogotas. And then with the snake rake, since it doesn't bump the pins as much, sometimes. That's the exact thing that I needed. Cool. So that was number one was, can you show me what you're talking about when you say snake rake? Number two is going to be for the audience. This is really important. And we just wrote this line in our uh, upcoming book. It's in the, uh, it's in one of the early chapters of our next book. That's about to produce or publish, which is have a little grace, especially in this lock well, in life period. But uh, in this lock picking world, the terminology and the nomenclature are, are all over the road. Uh, there's some things that are pretty agreed upon that have only one name. There's a lot of things that are pretty agreed upon that have like two or three common names, but there's also a lot of things that are uh, kind of layman's terms, or it has like five or six names, or it has like just a g only a generic name. So you can kind of call it whatever you want, as long as it sounds similar to the generic name. So have some patience with other people, have some patience with yourself and understand that in the lock picking world, um, as we talk about tools and even in the content that we teach, just because you have a lack of perfect nomenclature doesn't mean you lack the skill to carry out your craft. And just because you have really good nomenclature doesn't mean that you are good at carrying out your craft. At least it's not a given. So have some patience. I'm off the soapbox. Yeah. Thank you. Well, and some companies can have a proprietary name yeah. for a product. So a name might only refer to one company's version of that product. Some people mm -hmm. may use that interchangeably as a general descriptor. So, yeah, just stuff like that. And also, quick note, the reason I couldn't find it is... So it's the same company, but they have two different websites. So their Southern Specialties website does have the single picks where you can find that. I was yeah. not seeing it on the hard case version. I was missing the single pick option. So maybe it's there somewhere, but just quick note on that. All right. What else you got for favorite tools? Okay. My phone just turned off. All right. Here we go. This is good. I like this episode. This is making me happy. Next, I have the UDT. Uh, the two biggest places you can find those are uh, one would be sparrowslockpicks.com and the other one would be lockpicktools.com. Uh, let me get a price for you real quick. Uh, bypass tools. So lockpicktools.com has them for, um, I think, uh, 30 bucks. Sparrows has them for bypass, bypass, bypass. There we are. Sparrowslockpicks.com has the underdoor tool. Next page. 35 bucks. Right, so you're looking at 30 to 35 bucks. There are some 
ads that you will see if you're if you're starting to get into lock picking you will see some advertisements pop up on things like instagram or facebook that will say super duper spy reacher under door tool for used to be 99.99 marked down now to 79.99 warning <laughs> that is paying almost triple for a length of wire with a smaller length of wire attached to it uh, that's ridiculous. So 30 to 35 bucks, you're going to get a very high quality under door tool, no matter where, almost anywhere you go for that price. Uh, I, I love the thing about it that it is a, it really is a low tech solution to a ton of high tech secure doors. It doesn't matter if there's a, a, an electronic code pad on the, on the locked side of the door. It doesn't matter if there's a best lock. You know, it's kind of hard to pick. I just saw Sky Pirate raking those open. Pissed me right off. Um, it doesn't matter if it's, uh, if you have, you know, ID badge readers. If you can get your tool under the door, and, uh, and if you can trick the back of the door into having the handle turn, and therefore the latch recede, uh, it's just such a cool low-tech versus high-tech solution. And it's, it is difficult sometimes to get it to work, but it is also, it is simple to get it to work. It's a very simple concept. You reach under, you pull the handle. So big love for the underdoor tool. Uh, it's been one of my favorites since the day I learned of it several, several years ago. One of the most satisfying tools too, just to pull on the wire, feel the resistance of the handle turning yeah. and pop it right open. Yeah. If, if we're talking favorite tools, that's up there for that reason too. Um, yeah, and it's cool because it's like you were saying, it has a lot of application in in potentially higher security settings, especially commercial settings. Because a fire code, the door has to automatically unlock when you're leaving it, so people don't get trapped and die in a fire. Yes, uh, called and those are called egress doors or egress handles. Um, it's so, just a cool, it's yeah, the, uh, so just code. a yeah, so just a Oh, oh, okay. So it's ADA as, as well as fire code stuff too. Then, or maybe it's just ADA. Well, ADA but, covers. Uh, we can we can actually look this up. We can post it later. But the ADA covers like the shape of the handle and what the handle sh should be doing. So it can't be a mm -hmm. knob because if you have a disability like a hook hand, it's kind of hard to turn a knob handle, especially in a fire. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's the reason for some of the multifunction in the handle shape. Um, but yeah, a lot of fire code too is pretty similar to. There's a lot of overlap, of course. Cool. Yeah. So widely applicable tool. There's a lot of cool mods you can do to it as well. I believe the not so civil engineer, I think I'm getting his name right, has some cool mods, some cool videos where he uses a retractable Kevlar wire instead of, you know, the uh, just like metal wire that comes on it. So there's some cool stuff you can do to dress it up a bit and increase its effectiveness but just as it comes bless you just as it comes it's super effective and fun to use there's also a uh, an add-on that i like to do so a lot of them will come with a kind of a braided steel wire or some type of braided metal wire um they're not bad for the first few uses on any type of door but as you do this more on doors that have that kind of uh the punched metal sheeting around it where if you reach under the door like you're and you pull up with your fingers if you can kind of touch the hollow door where there's like it's like blank knife's edge uh metal on the bottom of the door if you use your steel cables on that or your metal cables on that uh, they will start to fray and eventually they'll break um, so i really like uh, a device called the key back device you can get it right from the manufacturer it's not very expensive um it's like a it's one of those high like high quality heavy duty um <laughs> you see like swag from conventions like it's it's a little ratcheting device that you can hook your keys to and as you pull a wire comes out and it's a thicker wire and it's coated really nicely uh, so i use those on all my underdoor tools cool what else we got for favorite tools i did udt uh what's your next one sure so i'll say we're sticking with the theme of favorite here, not necessarily most useful tool for every situation ever. And I'm going to go with a dedicated auto tension wrench oh, that, cool. yeah, so it has basically two claws that you can use 
to grab the keyway and apply rotational tension on it. And then a vehicle double-sided wafer rake. As newer cars get less susceptible to your traditional jigglers, I've had some luck with these tools on more modern cars, being able to rake them open when the traditional jigglers I have not been able to get opens on the vehicle keyway to get into the vehicle. Um, it's just one of my favorite tools to use. I just find it super satisfying to use. It's a cool thing to add to your skill set, but with this, it's still a game of percentages. This still doesn't just pop every vehicle door right open. Mm -hmm. So still not a guaranteed entry. Still only a percentage chance. I mean, if you if I really wanted to get in, you can always airbag and reach tool. It would probably be a higher percentage attack. But I just find something so satisfying about a dedicated auto tension wrench and auto wafer rake. Yep. And if, again, if the if the vehicle has a wafer lock inside the door handle, I mean inside the uh, keyway for the door, because a lot of them are moving away from that. But yeah, super satisfying. I love making those entries. Uh, you know what else pairs well with that? It's not it's not on my list, but uh, jiggler expansion tools or double sided uh, wafer rakes. Uh, I keep an expansion pack like that in my second line gear bag if I do want to go through the keyway and not necessarily a frame entry for the vehicle. Cool. Next favorite tool. My favorite tool for the push side of the door, so where you would usually have to use a flexible shim, I actually like cutting out the side of milk jugs because you can fold them in half and keep them in a wallet, but they still retain enough rig rigidity when you straighten them back out with the caveat of they will periodically need to be replaced. If it's folded up in there for a long enough time, it will start to crack. But much more than other stuff I've tried, it's easier to fold and store and then use than some other flexible shim products. We've been talking about designing another type of commercially available shim. We should probably follow up on that. Um, yeah, something foldable for the flexible shim is a game changer, I think, because if you're somewhere where you can pretty much just carry a regular size wallet. That can sometimes be a little harder to get a big enough piece of flexible shim that you can also always have with you. I agree. I like those little uh, Oscar Delta swivel luggage tags that we keep in our first line gear wallets. Oh yeah. Those are cool too. Yeah. It'd be nicer to somehow go bigger than that, but still in a wallet size, that would be uh, be tough. Uh, next on my list, uh, weighing in at, uh, what is it, $299? Let me Google that. Quick set smart key camera. E $345 is what I see it listed for now. Okay, $345. So for about $350... You get a camera that will look into the keyway of quick set smart key locks, and you can visually look at the screen on your phone, uh, kind of through a Bluetooth connection with what the camera tip is seeing, and you can just read the bidding of the lock. Um, but you also need something to generate a working key for that if you're going to use that as well. So that gets into key generation, not just lock picking, um, but tactical entry, period. Super, super useful tool if you have the other devices to assist you with your entry, like a key cutting machine or key cutting tool. Um, very, very, very useful. And a lot of fun to use. You look like a spy when you use it. It's super cool. Cool. Something I haven't used as much for entry, but in a similar vein, is if you just search endoscope on Amazon, you can get a flexible lighted camera. I've used it for working on cars and stuff. I would love to add one to my entry bag. I just haven't yet. But that's another camera-based product. These you can get for like $40 or less. You probably have a good like two, three feet of flexible like neck, I guess you would call it, to the camera. But you can bend it under doors, bend it around things. Eh. 
pro it so it definitely couldn't see in into the keyway the way that a smart key would need to see it since it has to look to the side to see where the sliders are. But these are just super cool in general uh, for around corners, under doors, whatever. Like I said, I've used it mostly for car stuff. But that's always what I think of, too, with the smart key camera is one of these endoscope cameras that you just view through a Bluetooth connection. That brings up a good point, too, which is that lock, tactical lock picking and lots of skills in life. It's not just the skill itself you need to pay attention to. So it's not just how do I use a tension wrench? How do I use a pick? It's also the associated gear and tools are, that are kind of administrative or logistic related. So things like how often would I use a uh, a multi-tool with lock picking. Well, pretty freaking often, believe it or not, a lot. Um, it's also really handy to have a pair of needle nose pliers. Um, very, very handy. Things like not just a flashlight attached to your bag or in your pocket, but a headlamp, a hands-free headlamp, super valuable for our skill set when we actually have to make entry in the field. So I would put a couple items in that administrative list, uh, but let's continue on with the favorites. I also have weighing in at $1,200. The Blue Punch Machine. That is a machine that cuts keys to a factory spec. Um, as simple as slide a gauge left and right to select your depth and punch the hammer down to cut the key. Slide the gauge to the left or right to select your next depth, punch the hammer down to cut the key. Um, I can go from having a blank in one hand, putting it into the machine, picking the right bidding, spacing, and depth and then punching that hammer five times um, to having a working key that is to factory spec, um, I can have it done in less than 30 seconds. So now if I know the bidding to a quick set lock that takes a KW1 key blank, whether that's a standard quick set keyway or a smart key quick set keyway, either way, it's the same key blank. If I know the bidding code for that target lock, and if I have my blue punch key machine with me, I know that within 30 seconds I'm getting into that door with a working key super duper valuable also super duper expensive and heavy and clunky and but brand specific a, and brand specific uh, but it is a favorite tool of mine i do enjoy having it i do enjoy uh, using it um, and it does have a very specific place in my kit um, but i of course can't carry it in my pocket Cool. So moving on, I'm looking to get the exact name of this. I think you actually showed me this for vehicle entries. It's a small lever with a piece of rubber on the bottom so you don't scuff up the paint on the oh, car. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, this one's branded as Access Tools High Tech Jack System. But it's a plastic lever with a little scoop to get between the doorway in the in the frame of the car. And then on the other side of that scoop, a rubber spacer, like I said, uh, just to keep the paint from getting scratched up. So this is really nice for working in the airbag. It's nice to kind of lean on. It really is a nice quality of life thing for vehicle entries. I'm going to just put a link into the podcast text chat here. Um, Uh, the one that I carry, which is probably the one I showed you that you just described, I have it here on lockpicks.com listed as a sidekick door gap tool for 26 bucks. There's a couple different makes and models of those things, but yeah, they're, they're very useful. Uh, when I have a minimalist entry kit, all I have is one or two airbags and one reach tool. That's it. But the very first thing I do, if I'm able to expand that kit for some reason, if I'm able to take my time. Um, and carry a couple extra tools to a vehicle entry, I'm definitely bringing that gap tool, 100%. Cool. I'm trying to think of what else I would consider as, like, a favorite tool. Uh, I would say laminated reference cards, especially for key cutting. But I like making laminated reference cards in general. They're small. I usually make them like the size of an index, index card or smaller. So laminator. It's like, I don't know what it is now, but probably 30, 40 bucks for a laminator. Can make all kinds of cool stuff. I, the last official one that I have on my list, and then we can start getting uh, loose after that and getting into nuance and different lines of gear and everything. 
the last official thing on my list is the Brute Force Code Notebook. You and I designed that one together, and Nathan Illustration from the Art and War podcast uh, did the artwork for that. And it it fits a very specific entry area, which is if there is a push-button mechanical lock that will help you in your entry, and if you have the time to do a Brute Force attack, then it is the right answer. Um, For that niche... I don't think there's anything better out there. I really do not. Um, I don't think there's anything else out there, <laughs> to tell you the truth. Um, we created a really fucking cool product. It looks nice. It's a, it's a field notebook size, so it's easy. Um, uh, it's very passive. It can just live in your gear and doesn't get in the way very much. Um, I think it's one of the coolest things we've designed. Um, I think we're going to be hard-pressed to do something cooler than that in the future. I think it just fits as such a good niche uh, that it just makes me happy that we have that. But what if you could also wear it? What if you could brute force something based on an article of clothing? Could you? You think? <laughs> Maybe if you head over to the web store. <laughs> I will. Let me head over to the web store. Let's see. How do I get there? Uh, U-T-A-C dot I-O. But yeah, that's we the, also that's the homepage. So Kaba codes click on store. also known as as the uh, simplex locks is a common name for them too. You'll see them a lot in government facilities, commercial facilities. It's the locks that have the vertical like push buttons, really clicky. Push them in. We put every possible code on the back of a shirt. So I that's another swag. that's another fun one. One, two, look at, we got five swag items. Look at that. We got three shirts, one glow in the dark patch and one koozie for tall boys like monsters. Oh, I thought you meant like big fellas. Oh, like a tall boy. Like boy. Yeah. Yeah. No, not the case, man. I'm not even drinking alcohol. I'm loose. I'm having fun. This is great. Uh, nice. Look at that. Yeah, New so t-shirt this... just got listed today for pre- pre-sale. Wow. But yeah, the uh, Brute Force shirts <laughs> probably can't scratch the codes off of your own back as you do them, but we think it's cool. So I do. I think we uh, wear that's, that's the coolest thing about this is we don't answer to anybody. If there's something that we think fits a good niche and it's useful or if it just looks cool, uh, we get to design it and we get to bring it to the market. Um and honestly, so it's so weird. So to say that it doesn't sell is not true. Um, there are we put out a few of these spiral code brute force code spiral notebooks to some people. Um, they scooped them up as soon as it went live, and they, I think, because I know a lot of our customers, it was the people that do this for real. That is a real tool for them to use, um, and it's going to fit a very good niche. Uh, but we don't sell a ton of them. Um, it's funny. I maybe we should do an episode one day where we talk about what we sell the most of, um, just you know, to kind of pull data to see what people are out there buying. Um, and by far, the Civi kits are one of our best sellers. Period. Uh, the tactical lock picking book is one of our best sellers. Period. Um, and then behind that is, uh, it's probably a fight. About five or six other items fight for third place. Um, our books sell the most. Uh, what, what would I just say was second place? Oh, the Civi intro kit was uh, maybe first, maybe second most popular item. Uh, yeah, we can do that some other time too. But I, I'm fascinated by seeing the decisions that people make about this stuff. It's really interesting to me. Yeah, same. And yeah, that wasn't a uh, serious trying to hawk the shirt. Maybe a little, <laughs> but it more is just like a like a like a cool shirt though. I mean, on the subject of brute force codes. So uh, Nathan did the art for that as well, right? He did the line art for the front of the shirt? Uh, For which, uh, yeah, for the Kaba shirt and for the uh, the new Pickfast shirt. He did both. And Sky Pirate and MySpace 2.0, they did the artwork for our first shirt that we... God, excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, Stomach's a little upset. Uh, Sky Pirate and my... Uh, did the artwork for our Big Sexy Brain shirt, which a lot of people ask about. And our original marketing was that we would only do uh, enough art for one shirt and then we'd discontinue it. 
for uh, one order. I might revisit that. Cool. Uh, I do have one more. Uh, so here's what I'd like to do next for our next segment. We're going to make it up as we go. I have one more item to add in favorite tools, um, just generic favorites. And then maybe we can do uh, worst tools or most surprising tools or things like something that doesn't get a lot of use, something like that. Uh, last one's going to be quick. Uh, the dudes are super cool to run the company. Uh, it's called the Door Jam, D-O-O-R-J-A-M-M, two M's at the end. Um, it is $12 on our website. It is one of the least expensive and one of the most useful real-life entry assisting tools that exist, period. It is. It does so much in such a small package uh, it's not expensive. It's easy to carry. Again, it's very passive, meaning it's just out of the way until you need it. Um, super high value tool for only twelve dollars. Agreed. All right, let's get into some uh, weird. Let's get into some weird or uh, other types of nuance. Sure. What you thinking for that? Um, I'm on a couple different lock picking uh, websites now. Let me take a browse through here. Uh, okay, terrible tool. Uh, if you go to lockpicks.com and you go to their automobile individual opener tools sub, uh, subsection, there's something called the Probe and Prod system. It's thirty bucks, and it's a bunch of straight sticks, and they are just like they're like thin metal, like an eighth of an inch. Uh, diameter like little metal rods and they're straight metal and some of them have screwed screws on the bottom and little elbow joints so you can screw onto so you can double or triple the length of the tool um they are not flexible they're just a straight shot um and the tips don't really seem like they have a lot of purpose it seems like someone at the factory was just like okay let's put a hook at the end that's fine let's sell that like it's not something that seemed like a lot of design work went into it um, the tools don't all fit together. They're not all modular, but some of them are. Um, I keep a set of these in my uh, my third line gear bag when I teach my courses just to show students, do not buy these tools. Uh, they're almost useless. I think they're a terrible vehicle entry tool. Yeah. Um, to... Let's see. Are these ones that have like the grabber on it too, or you can actuate like the claw? Yeah. Or am I thinking of, them, of a different set? Yes. One of them is the grabber um, at the end of the claw. Like the, you know, like the game that picks up the teddy bears from the machine. There's like a long straight stick that you push the plunger and a little claw comes out the bottom of the stick. Yes. That's also included. In okay. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah. That's one I, I'm thinking of too then. Yeah. What else has been a disappointment? Uh, God, there's been several. Um, there's a couple other automobile tools that are kind of one-offs. Uh, they're just terrible. There's one that looks like a big metal flat steering wheel t- type thing, and it's supposed to like roll underneath the door window and into the cab. Terrible tool. Um, never got it to work. Uh, the Magneto from Sparrows. Let me check their site here. Previous page. I'm actually going to give you the price for it too where are you I don't see it do you own one of those or have you ever tried using one of those no I have not Uh, I think I've heard you talk about it so much that I have never ventured down to mess with it I am looking through Sparrow's website, and I don't see the Magneto listed. I might not be able to find it, or they just might not sell it anymore. Um, bypass tools. Pad locks, practice locks, cutaway locks, handcuff, bump, lockbuster, pinning, pinning cases, tension, Sparrow's. Uh, I don't see it. I just might not be able to find it. Um, it's a little... It's like the size of a... Slightly bigger than like your standard 2 by 4 you know, rectangular Lego brick, um, you know, uh, okay. Slightly bigger than a box of matches and it's a magnet and it's designed to 
slap it on the left side of a Kaaba lock. It's those vertical five push button locks that you see on almost every government building. It's designed to slap on the side of that. And then you just turn the handle and open the door. Uh, two things. One, the lock has to have the old metallic system, uh, metallic swing arm inside the lock for that magnet to pull the metallic thing inside the lock to the side, affecting your entry. Uh, Kaba did a replacement for that. So there are some old Kaba locks in the field that still have the metallic internals. Yes. But every new Kaba lock that leaves the factory has been replaced with a plastic swing arm uh, that doesn't allow that technique to take hold. So that that tool is a percentage less effective every single day. Uh, I've tried it on maybe two dozen, maybe three dozen locks in the field. Never got it to work once, ever. Um, it lived in my second line gear bag for a very long time because even though it wasn't 100% effective, it was maybe 50, 40, 30, 20%. Field testing showed 0%, but even if it's a small percent effective, the time that it works, it's going to be lightning fast. Um, I finally made the decision to take that magnet out of my second line gear bag and instead to put some leashy decoder tools in there. Uh, way better of a return on investment as far as space in my bag was concerned. So I liked the concept. Um, when it did work on those uh, Kappa locks, I'm sure it was fantastic, uh, but it's just less and less effective every day. So um, your gear selection, your gear assignment should always be alive and changing um, as technology changes, as your budget changes, as your area of operations changes, and as you learn and grow, you should always be changing your gear loadout. So that's one of the recent items that I took out of my lock picking deployment bag. In the context of favorite gear, what do you think about Lishy Clippers if we're going by favorites? Not necessarily oh, yeah. a value judgment for how useful or not it is, but favorite. What do you got on that? I'm going to say no, not on, not on my list. Um, and I know that they're a big chunk of our curriculum, and I think that they're very important, but I wouldn't call it a favorite for one reason, which is there was a tool that was about that same size but way more effective, and that tool has been discontinued. Um, God, I would love to design a tool to replace that. Um, it's just that Leashy Clippers take so much knowledge and practice to get them to a point where they're giving you a solid return on investment. So, no, they are not a favorite tool of mine because there was better out there before and there will be better out there again. So right now, they're the best that the market has to offer, but they come with a, uh, a steep learning curve. That's my thought. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, I agree. I think it's kind of the Lishy Clippers you use that kind of look like pliers to hand cut a key. Probably the best intersection currently of accessibility, affordability weight and being able to to carry it around uh, it's portable but yeah it's kind of the best we got not necessarily like the dream tool so maybe one day the pack a punch will return god that would be so nice yeah but what about the lishy decoder picks do you oh. rate those as a favorite or uh just because probably not I think they're fantastic, and they definitely have a home in my kit and will for probably a long time. The only reason I wouldn't say they're a favorite tool of mine is just because they don't get a lot of use, just because bypass is king. Um, anytime we can bypass, we're going to bypass. So if I have to pick, I can still rake, I can still single pin pick, and I can still use all my rakes and picks for that. So they also fit a niche, which is, oh, we've decided to pick. Okay, let's use those. Oh, it's a little too high security. I'm struggling with my rake. I'm struggling with my single pin picking. Yeah, I'll use the leashy. Um, and you get to create your own curriculum. Uh, they might be the very first thing you grab, um, but they you can't carry them in your pocket. Well, you can, but you're going to run out of pocket space really quickly. They are make model specific. Um, so there's a couple reasons that I wouldn't list them on my favorites, uh, but that doesn't mean that they're not high value, and that doesn't mean I don't like them. They're just not a favorite. A lot of nuance. Yeah, and I'd agree with that. I think they are absolutely fantastic for their application where they are appropriate. Absolutely fantastic. 
You can pull bidding information from a lock with them way easier and faster than impressioning. Mm -hmm. Even that might not always be 100% perfect. If you have to make a judgment call between which line is the indicator sitting on, is it a little high? Is it a little low? I know we've run into situations like that. But even all things considered, way easier than impressioning to pull bidding from a lock. So fantastic for what they are good at and definitely should be a part of anyone's kit if they are expanding into second and third line, in my opinion. <sighs> Miscellaneous category. Uh, let's see. I got my bags here. I got... Um... Let's take a look. While you're looking, I enjoy using... I got a cheap, like, no-name tubular lockpick set from some Chinese company. I forget if it was, like, AliExpress or Banggood or something. I, f I want to say it was... I mean, this was maybe, like, a year or two or more ago. But I want to say it was, like, 30 or 40 bucks, and I'm surprised with how well it works because the legit ones, I want to say, are all, like, $70 plus. So these aren't going to be better than a legit one, but I'm very surprised with how well it does work for what it is. I wouldn't really recommend people rely on these if there's something at stake because of potential quality. But they are a great tool to get some hands-on experience with tubular, tubular lock picking. I've had fun with them. Uh, so I don't know if I'd say that they're literally a favorite tool, but I do enjoy getting them to work. There's something very satisfying about it. And yeah, like for not that much money to get hands on with tubular lock picking. I like them. Okay. How do you feel about uh, two items that are pretty similar? Bump keys and a snap pick gun. So I don't well, I guess really the electronic ever... picture in that category too. Yeah, so I don't really ever use bump keys or the snap pick gun. I've only used them in passing, so not something I use. I know some people love bumping. That's just not a part of the skill set I have really he um, heavily harped on. And then I kind of consider snap gun very similar to that. The electronic picks, though, those are interesting. I have used those a bit. Uh, so I don't own an, like, an electronic pick, but I've used it a little more. I would say that, I mean, the lock still has to more or less be susceptible to raking with an electronic gun. So maybe it's a little faster. I've also used it where it was not faster. And maybe that was just me, my technique, my learning curve with it. But I felt like, well, sometimes I stick rakes in and it opens right up in, you know, under 10 seconds. So the marginal benefit for me was even if it was a little bit faster, the lock still has to be susceptible to raking. Mm -hmm. So at some point, even if I have to use a lower profile rake, if I, you know, like a rake that's has too high of highs and too lows of lows, that might be my first troubleshooting if I can't get it. So for me, the electronic picks are cool. Uh, I'm not trying to denigrate them at all, but I don't think I would go out and add one into my kit really for when they are I mean correct me if I'm wrong but only going to work when I could rake it with regular rakes anyway at least mechanically in theory I have heard that they will open up some higher security locks like some six pins or seven pins or things with spools um, and security pins in them. oh okay I've cool. heard that they will help you level up um, quicker so if you need to get into a lock and it's a little more high security than you can standardly rake or maybe even single pin pick, I've heard that they can help you cross that bridge. But the next question with trade-off is where do you carry it? You know, if it's electronic, which electronic picks are, um, is it charged? Do you have a charging cord? You know, is it battery powered? Is it specific battery? How long does it take? How long does it take to charge? Is it always charged? Are you going to keep your gear in the trunk of your car in 110 degree heat in South Texas? If so, you're probably not going to get a very long shelf life out of your, you know, electronic tools and battery powered tools that are in your kit bag. Um, you know, if you're going to a lockout or a call out, if you're starting with your first line items, when would you go back for that kit? that's in your vehicle or wherever else your bag, your go bag is your second line gear. So lots of things to consider for trade-off. Um, 
just the economics of the price you're paying for it, the maintaining of it, the charging of it, where you store it. Are there other things you should be storing in your bag besides that? Um, so lots of trade-off questions for me anyways, um, just to get you over a hump. So, okay. Yeah, it's an option. Cool. Yeah. Like I said, I only had very brief experience with that. So take what I said with a grain of salt, but yeah, that line of questioning makes sense for how are you going to plan to use it beyond just the mechanics of it using or, you know, of it working. So cool. I want to list, I have two other favorites. We're going to let them sneak in here uh, really quickly. Double door tool from Sparrows is my number one favorite reach through tool um, to pop security bars on doors. Uh, the next one is your full handle decoder tools. Um, you can get them in multiple places. It's just a little easy decoder that you use. You pinch between your thumb and forefinger. It's like the size of two pennies laid next to each other. Um, just one of those that's full handled to help you kind of shim inside the up along the side of a dial to feel for the correct gate to decode a lock. Um, I like having those tools with long full handles um, instead of the tiny ones that you hold in your fingers. Um, decoding tools are just so crazy valuable just because of the, the insane amount of different makes and models that that tool will help you open. Um, it's just so many different wheeled combination locks out there that that tool is just infinitely valuable for that reason that it's uh, not specific to make some models. Yeah, I agree. It's so much nicer to have that full handle to work with uh, more dexterity. So agreed on all counts. Any other honorable mentions? Uh, just generic lock picking tools for anything. What do you got? Uh, let's see. Uh, we covered lighting sources. Uh, you kind of covered it with the multi-tool, but I have a little tool selection in my second line bag. Uh, some Allen wrench, some folding Allen wrench sets, little tiny screwdrivers to take stuff apart with interchangeable bits. Those are nice. Uh, some cutting tools and a small pry bar. Uh, so that's other stuff that I personally like having in my bag. And we'll close, let's, let's close it out then with uh, a nod to the first thing that you said, which was, what about my city rake? Well, look no further. Uh, we, Uncensored Tactical, has brought together the Bogota camp and the city rake camp into one little lover's quarrel package for 30 bucks on our website. Yes, I am shamelessly hawking gear, but I like this kit because I fucking designed it with the help of you. Um... And it makes me happy. It's got two tension wrenches, so you can get your left, right, and your up, down tension. It's got a, a little dog ear spot for top of keyway tension. It's got a hook, a triple peak Bogota rake, and a city rake in there, uh, all in a nice vinyl carrier so that you can take the tools out and put the tools back in. Because another terrible honorable mention for tools that I hate is anything you have to punch out of its retaining system that doesn't go back into its retaining system. So like those credit card punch out sets, hate them. Absolutely hate them. Agreed. And one last word on the city rake. I actually do like it because it is often, I I guess it, it can vary by brand, but it also, I think, has a little bit lower of a profile than Bogota's too. So I've mentioned that a couple times so far, but I actually do like having both the Bogota and city rake. I also just enjoy the memes. Yeah, lots of people hating on that camp. I have never cared one way or the other. Uh, n you know what? Neither has anyone else. It's just, it's a fun fake debate. Um, yeah. Cool. Let's wrap it up. We'll go over to the after show. So thank you so much for everybody. I really enjoyed doing this episode just for the lock picking community. This was a lot of fun. Uh, nice and short, nice and sweet. Easiest way to get a hold of me is my email, pat at utac.io. We do have just a few more seats left in our August 17th and 18th tactical lock picking two-day extravaganza course we're covering padlocks door locks uh, raking picking bypassing uh, vehicle entries restraint escapes code breaking uh, and i'm pretty sure that's both sky pirate and oni no hanzo from surreptitious services will both be there 
uh, as well as being hosted by Protective Ops, which who's been incredibly helpful to us. So we would love to see you in some of our courses. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out our content and our episode. Uh, for the few of you that are in our Patreon support above the $2 level, we'll see you guys on the after show. Let's do it.